Let's compare the interpretation of absolute and relative benefits and risks. Here we compare two studies, one with antidepressant 1 or ADP1 and the other with antidepressant 2 or ADP2 for the outcome, which is improvement in depression. In the first study for ADP1, the EER is 40% and the CER is 20%. The relative benefit increase is 1, which expressed as a percentage is 100%, and the NNT is 5. Thus, 5 people need to be treated with antidepressant 1 to get one additional person better. Let's compare this to antidepressant 2. For the study with ADP2, the EER is 4% and the CER is 2%. The relative benefit increase is 100%, which is exactly the same as ADP1. But the NNT shows that you would need to treat 50 people with ADP2 to get one additional person better. Which antidepressant would you choose? This is an important aspect as relative benefits may be used to make one drug look better than the other, but it is the absolute benefits and NNT that help us in decision making. If the drug reduced the risk of an event, then the relative benefit increase or RBI becomes the relative risk reduction or RRR. Remember that the statistical significance of the NNT can only be inferred from the p-value and confidence intervals. Another important point about NNTs is that the NNTs from different therapies can only be compared if the therapies were tested in similar populations with the same condition, same outcomes against the same comparator, and over the same time frame. It is erroneous to compare medications or other interventions simply on the basis of NNTs without taking into account the other nuances of the studies.